Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. As we uh, focus on wrapping up the So So quest, or at least the parts we can actually wrap up in Act 3. Now, while I have generally tried to avoid late game spoilers, I have been told that none of the companion quests wrap up this early in the game. Well, Cam, I guess, but, uh, you know, she was kind of a special circumstance. And I suppose there is still a chance she might show up again. This is Galerion. Stranger things have certainly happened. That's it. Let's uh, pop over to the Lost Chapel. We'll track down those deserters. Then move on to whatever comes next. Fog of War? Oh, look at that. They dropped us on part of the map that we haven't been to before. Interesting. Okay, okay, let's have a look around. There's our deserters. A pair of wounded fugitives sits wrapped in a rag near a barely smoking fire. A half-elf man and a dwarf woman. There is a mixture of revulsion and sympathy on Sosiel's face. After a moment of hesitation, he walks toward the fire. Did you escape from slavery among the Knights of the Order of the Nail? What? Uh, no, revered cleric. We know nothing about any... Stop playing dumb. They know all about us. It's obvious that Graham ratted us out, the scoundrel. Damn it, we're done for. The half-elf looks at you wistfully. He is clearly ready to part with his life. Socio looks at you silently. There is a storm of emotion on his face. He opens his mouth to say something, but after taking a shaky breath, closes it again. The cleric obviously doesn't know where to begin. So you two did work for the Order of the Nail? We did. Not in the Order proper, of course. Just as hired soldiers. First we served for money, then they made us slaves, and we worked for free. We deserved to be punished. Because of us, the only good person in their damn order perished. The half-elf spits. It's true. If we hadn't lost our nerve back then... And Graham? What can you tell me about him? A complete scumbag? The Hell Knight's hired infantry are no followers of Shaelin. There aren't many good people among us, but Graham still stood out. The last to fight, the first to eat. Always ready to pillage, rob civilians, steal from corpses. There's nothing he wouldn't do. And he drank like a horse. One of the Knights, probably the best of them... He made Graham his valet, tried to make him a better person, but to no effect. Graham quit drinking, though, but he was still scum. This knight had a saying. He said Graham changed his gold for copper coins. I'm not sure there was ever anything golden about Graham, rust more like. But Master Vanek tried to see some good in him. It's a pity he died without finding anything. Changed his gold for copper coins. Sosiel repeats these words in a whisper, clenching his fist. A proverb from Andoran. Tell me about what happened to the exterpreters. The order we served hunted monsters. You know, manticores, basilisks, sometimes even dragons. But this time, their instincts were wrong. Yes, they didn't expect that beast. It caught them off guard. And before we knew it, half the unit was dead. They tried to fight back, but we... What about us? For us, it was a chance to be free. We ran toward Canabras. Nobody there would care where we'd come from or who we'd served. But Graham was braver. He took armor from a corpse and went to Mendev through Dresden. 
It's probably where you picked him up, right? Tell me. Sociel's voice breaks. He clears his throat and starts over. Tell me what you know about Trevor Vanek. Master Vanek? The dwarf looks down. We served under his command. He was an amazing man. A true hero. Then how do you end up with the Hell Knights? Uh, no offense, Regil. We heard he came from somewhere in Andoran, not for profit like us. No, he had one goal. To rid this world of demons. I always thought he was too good to be a Hell Knight. Such a man should have been a paladin. But who are we to question our commander about his life choices? Anyway, he made his way in the world. In half a year, he was promoted from a squire to a knight. Went through the trial and earned the right to wear black armor. Sociel bites his lip without saying a word. What was Trevor like? Strict, demanding, toward others, but toward himself above all. And despite his strictness, he was a kind man. He just knew that discipline was required if we wanted to survive here among the demons. He'd work us hard. He could thrash the hide off us for wrongdoings. But his strictness saved many lives. Yes, he often talked to us about his brother. According to him, he was a real saint. But even if only part of what Master Vanek told us was true, his brother was a decent man. Not a fighter, not a hero. An ordinary village priest, somewhere in Andoran. A man who seeks no glory, but just does everything he can to help others. Sosio looks away. Master Vanek idolized him. He used to say that he would never be as good a person as him. But at least he would win this war so that his brother wouldn't have to see it. I don't know what kind of person his brother really is, but I remember one thing. He used to say, when you go to war, leave your heart at home or you'll taint it. I think his heart really stayed there with his brother and Andoran, among all those orchards and vine groves. Clean and pure, while his body was drowning in mud and blood here. What happened to him? We killed him. That's not true. It was a demon what killed him. We could have saved him, but... We were cowards. I'll never forgive myself. We were hunting down a chimera, and Master Vanek and the other knights were supposed to kill it. And suddenly a terrifying demon in a black mask appeared out of nowhere. He roared something like, You'll do, and grabbed Master Vanek. And then he ran straight at us. We should have fought and taken him back. But we panicked and scattered. And when we came to our senses, there was no sign of them. We were made slaves as punishment. They said that if we couldn't fight honorably in formation, we'd atone for our crimes by doing dirty work. They made us dig trenches, carry baggage, and... In battle, they'd send us ahead to distract the monsters as bait. We dropped like flies. Out of all those who were on that damned hunt, only the two of us survived. Three, if you count Graham. Wait, so was he killed or abducted? No one found his body, it's true. But no one saw him again, either. What could the demons have done to him? They must have devoured him. Hopefully it was quick. There was a woman named Marenta. She had Trevor's shield. Do you know how that happened? She was Master Vanek's betrothed. When the demon dragged him away, his shield was left on the ground. Marenta took it as a keepsake. I don't know what he saw in her. She was angry like a devil. But with him, even she seemed to become a bit kinder. But once he was gone, she turned into a real Arenas. She wanted us to be executed for cowardice, every last one of us. But when the commander said no, she left for another order. I don't know what happened to her after that. This is why I don't ask my soldiers about their past. 
If I'd known about these theatrics of hers, my opinion of her would have been much lower. But I just watched her in battle. In the end, she proved to be a worthy fighter. And what about you two? Anything I should know there? There's nothing special about us. But if you have questions, ask us. We'll answer honestly. Uh, never mind. I have apparently already asked you all these things. So I guess I was mistaken. Then maybe we should tell you something else about Master Vanek? I don't know. What do you say, So-So? So, Seal? So you are... No one saw a body, right? So maybe I still have a chance of finding my lost brother. Thank you for your words. You... You have given me back my hope. Sosiel hands a small bag to the fugitives. Take this. There are healing potions, food, some gold, and a letter. Show it to the guards at the gates of Canabras. You will be taken care of. Sosiel gives Regil a defiant look, but says nothing. The gnome shrugs nonchalantly. Strictly speaking, these two are the property of the Order of the Nail. But I see they are useless rubbish. I shall have to submit a report about misuse of resources, but it will most probably go unread. The Order has more important problems than chasing these two wretches. They've just lost an entire chapter. Did you hear? The Order will be notified about your location. Don't stay in Canabras for too long. Yeah, yeah, what he said. Thank you, Master Vanek. Your brother was right. You really are a saint. Taking the bag, the fugitives walk away quickly. The cleric watches them leave. It seems I know very little about my brother. And about myself. He looks at you sadly. How are you holding up over there, Soso? You've been acting odd for a while now. Sosiel rubs his forehead. I was frightened. More frightened than I've been fighting any monster. Even more frightened than when the demons destroyed Canabras. I was afraid of what they would tell me. And now I've heard it all. This truth. I can't wrap my head around it. But at least the fear is in the past. What I was most afraid of is true. It hurts so much. And still, this pain is easier to bear than uncertainty. Thank you for being with me. Had I been alone, I, I probably wouldn't have said a word. It's not just Trevor you're worried about, is it? Sosiel nods. I have always looked up to Trevor. I thought I was weak and tried to be like him. But if he has fallen so low, then what could happen to me? What do I know about myself and my limits? If this war has made a hell knight out of him, what will I become? I'm surprised you forgave them so quickly. I'm not sure I could have done that myself. Forgive them? Socio looks at you, surprised. Ah, you mean that... Listen, you saw them. These are poor people who joined a war they weren't prepared for in exchange for a pittance. I didn't even think about holding a grudge against them for that. Yes, they wavered in battle, and because of that, Trevor was abducted. But it wasn't their fault. It's the fault of those who throw weak people into the jaws of the abyss and demand they do impossible things. Yeah, yeah, I get that. But hey, look, we will find your brother, wherever he is. Yes, thank you for continuing to search with me. Even if he is in the abyss, dead or alive, I'm sure that together we will find him. I found out the truth, but... The cleric shakes his head. 
I'm not sure what to think of it. Trevor fell as a paladin. But did you hear what these people said about him? He was the best of the Hell Knights? I can't wrap my head around it. What do you make of it all? That's a tough question, so so I think your brother... I think your brother had noble intentions, but, uh... You know, war changes people. Doubly so in a place like this. He made the most with what he had. Sounds like it actually worked out for him for a while, too. Until it didn't. That saying about leaving one's heart at home, it didn't save him. But if Trevor wasn't strong enough, what will happen to me? Will I also become... The cleric shakes his head helplessly. The most important point is he might still be alive. I don't know what demon in a black mask attacked him or where he was taken. And it scares me to imagine what they did to him there. But he might still be alive. And that means my hope is still alive, too. Thank you for helping me find out the truth. Whatever it was. Yeah, don't mention it. Wish we had a happier ending for you, but... It is a work in progress. Let's see if we've got anything else out here. Hey, there we go. And I guess that's it. We'll do one more pass off screen real quick, just to make sure. But uh, then we'll pop back over to Dresden. See what else we can shake loose. We'll be right back. And we're back. There was nothing else, so... We're headed back to Dresden, but first things first. Let's get Agaboya's assassins on intercept. We have a demon army coming up from the south, so... We want to make sure she stops them short of Pilkwell's crew. Oh, hey. Speaking of whom, Pilkwell gained a level. We'll grab wards. And back to Dresden. Hopefully we've got something waiting for us. Actually, you know what? Before we get sidetracked, let's swing by the jail real quick. We'll tie up some loose ends. From what the deserters told us, Scram is definitely a scumbag, but but more of the the opportunistic bully variety, as opposed to like a serial killer or anything. That's essentially Vex in a nutshell before his character growth, so we'll cut him loose. The imposter is still staring at the cracks in the ceiling. You again. What else you need? Nothing. We're done with you, Graham. You're free to go. Seriously? I thought I was going to die here. <laughs> well, thank you, Commander. I hope we don't meet again. You and me both, Graham. Now get out of here. Now let's go have a quick chat with So-So, and we should be done with this. Well, relatively speaking. Again, obviously we've got more coming in Act 4 or 5. Ember? Lady Kayomi? You know, we never, uh, we never did get to know the council leaders. Kayomi, Dorgal into Stranglehold. 
the other two whose names escape me because they're not directly in front of me while I'm thinking about it. Oh, Captain Odin. That's one of them. But not who I am currently looking for. Yeah, I'd like to uh, chat them all up at some point. Get a better handle on their lore. Sosiel is drawing a fortress on a hill. With solid walls, looming towers, and knights bearing banners marching through the gates. You don't realize at first that you have seen this place before. The cleric's gift has rendered the lost chapel almost unrecognizable. Good afternoon, Commander. How can I help you? Just checking in, buddy. You have a chance to uh, think about this whole Trevor situation on the walk back? Happy to lend an ear if you want to talk about it. I've always despised these people, the Hell Knights. But when my brother left the path of service to the goddess, he made a place for himself among them. And he did a lot of good, it seems. I don't know what to think. Perhaps I shouldn't have put Trevor on a pedestal. Perhaps I shouldn't have treated those knights so poorly. You see, I... I was quite fervent in my beliefs as a boy, and I thought the teachings of the goddess had already revealed to me all the truths I should know. Now I realize I didn't know a thing about the world around me or about myself. Perhaps this war will chew me up the same way it did Trevor, or perhaps his example will keep me from breaking. Well, I'm glad that... I'm glad you're growing, so-so. It is nice seeing him recognizing his own failings. And uh, being a bit more forgiving about the failings of others as well. I like to imagine that over time, Vex is also changing as he's exposed to more and more of these events. You know, Ember in particular. But that it's making, it's slowly, ever so slowly, making him a slightly better person as well. Oh, hey, we've got a thing. Sikathbanoth, who usually poses as a mortal, is beaming happily. I just exchanged a couple of words with your officers. Such talented boys and girls. They're almost bursting with ideas so magnificent and insane the demons themselves would envy their... Well, mostly their lack of balance, but they would definitely be envious. I was particularly struck by two ideas. The genius military doctrine of Harem Scarum War, and the amazing strategic plan of Helter Skelter Logistics. Both ideas are based on the concept of thoughtless action, chaotic moves that befuddle the enemy and make them panic, eventually leading to hysterics and surrender due to a complete inability to comprehend what the opponent is doing. If I were you, I would implement only one, because applying both may lead to the crusade collapsing due to... Uh, a unique and creative approach to resource management. His Majesty breaks into a happy, sentimental, and just a bit tipsy smile. Eh, it's all hogwash. The best decision is obviously to apply both. My kingdom can easily withstand a couple of innovative ideas at once. So long as, you know, the enemy can't even guess at what our next move is going to be. Not in their wildest dreams. Not in their worst nightmares. It's the element of surprise, understand? Uh, no, no, I, I actually don't understand. What are we talking about? Following the harem scarum doctrine, your imaginative officers will be given orders to do strategically random and entirely unpredictable... things on the battlefield. Of course, there is always a small, very small, risk of the decisions being useless or even harmful. But if luck smiles to you... A phenomenally stupid decision may end up being phenomenally effective. The whole point of Helter Skelter Logistics is to give your supply officers unparalleled freedom to make creative decisions with the provisions. No one will be assigned duties and everyone will get to choose how they want to provide logistical support. Maybe they'll have 30 wagons of right-handed gloves delivered to the army. Maybe they'll hire specialists to build perfect chicken coops so that the hens produce the right size feathers for the Fletchers. 
Or maybe they'll construct a pen to corral war minotaurs. Once they're done, you'll see what you have to work with. But you never know, it could be exactly what you need. Yeah, I, I somehow doubt that, but... Dare I ask what happens if we try doing both of these things at once? Well, first, I want to officially declare that the Fifth Crusade would be the funniest and most fantastic mortal endeavor I've ever seen. Second, I must warn you that your army would soon become an unmanageable mess. Not even my ingenious mind can predict what kind of difficulties would arise from combining these two monstrously perfect ideas. The king thoughtfully inserts a finger in his ear. Well, a tiny bit of a mess will probably happen. Maybe we'll lose a little gold or misplace some soldiers after we send them to Grund or some such. But we'll get the notable benefits of both strategies. And just imagine the effect that the combined tactics would have on our enemies. Right. Very, very reassuring. Thanks. Let's, uh, let's have a look at what these actually do. Harem Scarum War. Each day, all generals gain a random feat from the list. Black Spot. At the start of the battle, a random enemy unit receives the Black Spot. After that unit is destroyed, all units in the Crusade army gain the Critical Strike feat. For good, or just until the end of the fight? That should really be clarified. To each their place. At the start of a battle, random unoccupied squares are marked on the battlefield. Units standing there gain a 50% chance to deal double damage. How does it work? The general has a 33% chance to cast a random spell without spending energy. Instead of the one selected. Well, that is terrible, because we don't have a shortage of energy. But we are very reliant on casting the right spells at the right time. Crowned Checker. An infantry unit that reaches the right border of the battlefield gains the Crowned Checker feat. And low gravity... All units gain flight. Okay, sure. So, crowned checker. Unit gains a plus 30% bonus to maximum HP and a plus 10 bonus to all ability scores after destroying an enemy unit. Again, permanently or till the end of the current battle. I'm guessing the latter. But regardless, most of these feats are pretty mediocre and the real deal breaker is that spell feat. We're just too reliant on casting the right spells at the right time, so... That is a definite no-go. Helter Skelter Logistics. Every 11 days, the Crusade gains a random positive effect from the list. Uh, adds 10,000 finance points. Or, adds 600 materials points. Or, adds 75 energy points. Or, adds 3,000 finance, 250 materials, and 25 energy points. Or the construction of a random building has been finished. Double recruitment. Or random guests. An extra... An extra mercenary unit. Interesting. Well, all of those effects are universally positive, so I mean, that is much more appealing. There's no chance it could really go wrong. You always get something, and it's always something nice. And then if you do both... Look at this mess. Yeah, you get the full undiluted effects of both. And also start bleeding out one morale a day. And if we reject both, then we impose harsh discipline. Definitely not our style, and we don't need the morale, so... So yeah, let's go Helter Skelter. That, that one actually sounds pretty solid. The demon can barely hold back laughter. He gives you an exaggerated mock salute. It shall be done, Commander, sir. Well, thanks for stopping by, Socks. Your Majesty. Let's see what else is going on here. Yet another stupid advice. Some snob who somehow thinks they're entitled to advise the Crusade leader is impatiently waiting in Dresden to present another far-fetched idea. Already resolved. Get out of here. One day out from Beer Golems. I have actually been told by a couple of folks to not stockpile too much before we before we end the act, but 
you know, I don't want to game the system too much. We'll do some stockpiling, but I won't go crazy with it. I sure hope they're not planning on, like, resetting our armies, though. Stripping players of the resources they worked for is always uh, a, a hard sell. Okay, so we can repeat this one in five days. We'll keep that in mind. That was a leadership project, so we only had two other relatively mediocre options, I think. No, one bad one, because one of the options was researching what's-his-face's experiments to turn people into sentient clouds of bugs. We're, we're definitely not doing that one. I actually wish we could just clear that one out of our list entirely, because we are never choosing it. Hey, here we go. Commander, the woman entering the room is horribly wounded. Her simple clothes are soaked with blood. Her face has been beaten to a pulp, and one arm is twisted at an unnatural angle. She walks toward you, but her legs give out, and she falls to the floor. Commander, it's Ember. Ember's been taken. Hey, could we uh, get some help over here? One of the soldiers helps your guest up and hands her a healing potion. The woman drinks it and sighs with relief. She still looks terrible, but at least her wounds are no longer bleeding, and she's standing on her own two feet. Thank you, Commander, but don't waste time on me. I don't deserve your kindness. You must save Ember! Baphomet cultists came to her sermon. They slaughtered everyone and took her off to their unholy shrine to sacrifice her. I can tell you where it is. I'm begging you, hurry before they do something to her. Baphomet cultists in Dresden? They're everywhere, Commander. The army, the bureaucracy, ordinary people. They have spies high and low, and they recruit those weak in spirit. Some of them get caught, but they're like mold. If you miss just one speck... It's not long before they spread everywhere again. Right, right. And uh, how exactly do you know where this secret shrine to Baphomet is? You're very perceptive, Commander. The woman lowers her head, stops for a moment, and then forces herself to continue, looking you straight in the eye. I didn't come here only to tell you about Ember's abduction, but also to surrender to the law. I am a cultist of Baphomet. It's my fault Ember was taken. Okay, hold on. Let's back up a step here. If you are a cultist, then why in the world would I trust you? I regret what I did. That doesn't absolve me of my guilt, but at least I can do some good before I accept my punishment. Uh-huh. Okay, well, why don't you tell me about this cult of yours, then? I was recruited a few months back. I came to this city to work on a construction site. I was alone with no friends and no money. I met some nice people in the tavern. Her beaten face twists into a grimace. We spent some good times together, and they were always willing to help me in any way they could. They even let me borrow money and never asked for it back. I really thought I'd found friends. Then they started saying things about unfairness in the army, that Galfrey is a tyrant, and you're her executioner, that fighting cultists is just slaughtering innocent people who see things a different way. I felt like something was off, but they were my friends. Well, it didn't take even two months before I was kissing the hoof of Baphomet's statue in his shrine, and swearing an oath to his warlord, Thazgarod. Break Baphomet's profane altar, destroy his cult, and punish me in front of everyone as an example to the rest. I will certainly take that under consideration. Uh, who's Thasgrod? A very powerful demon. I've only seen him once, and I almost died of fear. He is huge, and he breathes fire and devours human souls. He has an entire army of Templars at his command. 
Okay, well, how did Ember get caught up in all this? At first, I stayed away from her sermons, but the cult leaders kept a close eye on her. People flocked to her. The cultists dreamed of poaching her congregation, and maybe even luring her to their side, too. When she started saying prayers for the demon lords, we thought it would be easy to entice them to our side. But we underestimated her. Five spies, including me, infiltrated her congregation. And when the other cultists came for her, all five of us took up arms to protect her from them. Hold on, Ember said prayers for demon lords? You, you're sure about that? I mean, it's entirely in character for her, but still. You didn't know? She's a true saint. I don't know what else to call her. She was offering up prayers for all the demon lords. Baphomet, Descari, Nocticula, Cabriri. Asking that they come to their senses and end this war. Stop hurting people. She believes there is good in everyone, even in creatures who are evil incarnate. I don't know if anyone can make demons come to their senses. But she can do it with people. How could I keep hurting crusaders after I, along with the others, appealed to Baphomet's better nature? How could I ask him to repent? And not repent myself? Yeah, I guess that does make a weird kind of sense. All right, um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. I will humbly accept your judgment, whatever it may be. You know what? Uh, you really honestly seem pretty genuine about this whole thing. And I mean, you let me know that Ember's in trouble and where to find her and how to rescue her. So assuming that all checks out, I, I guess you're free to go. Just, you know, uh, try not to relapse or anything. Normally when I run into occultists, they don't get second chances. Thank you, Commander. You have been kinder to me than I deserve. But that is exactly what Ember teaches us to do. I will do anything to keep others from falling into the cult's web. And you, please save our little saint. She bows and leaves. Yeah, yeah, like I said, totally on it. In fact, um, we are starting to come up on time, but we're obviously not going to leave off on a cliffhanger with Ember's fate in the balance. I'm not that cruel. So let's get out there. We'll try to make this quick. I'll bet you've learned a ton of songs already, huh? Or whatever Desna likes folks to do. Give us a song, will ya? I... I mean... I'm still not comfortable singing on demand like that. And we're back. Fully rested, lightly buffed. Let's do this. Baphomet's Shrine. The mortals that devoted themselves to demons hid the secret shrine of their master, Baphomet, in the shadow of a tall rock. Honest citizens and brave knights by day, they would hurry up here at night to sacrifice yet another innocent life to their lord. The sacrificial blood flowed on until the cultists brought a certain barefoot priestess to be slaughtered on the altar. Ah, nice. We've got a moment to ourselves. One sec. Let me toss down some short-term buffs. I see we've also got a nice, refreshing blood rain. That's certainly not foreboding. We're good. Let's go.
The altar of Lord Baphomet has been desecrated. We will clean it with the blood of traitors. Look what you've done. Give them the girl and we'll be pardoned. Hands off, scoundrels. We won't give her to anyone. Not to you or the demons. Please, don't fight. You're all kind people. You don't need to hurt each other. Baphomet demands blood. Spare no one. Traitors and faithful alike will be sacrificed to our Lord. Looks like the girl is right. If we want to survive, we'll have to fight together. Close ranks. And we're right into it. With some uh, rather unlikely allies. Oh, hi, hi there. That was a very poor decision on your part. Wow, or not. Slightly more like it. Oof, those guys are not faring well. We need to make this quick. Oh, you jerk. Confusion, huh? Thankfully, we've got a spell for that now. Sela, let's get you in there. Your time to shine. Not terrible. Oof, but that guy might be an issue. Let's pull Helpful back. I think we've got this. No reason to endanger the doggo. Joyful Rapture. Confusion is an emotion effect, right? So in theory, this should clear it. Oh, right, right, right. He already attacked before he saved, so he can't cast now. Gotcha. Hey, there we go. Crit Storm. And down he goes. No plot armor on Thazgarod.
Breathing hard, a cultist knight wipes her blood-smeared sword on a tabard, depicting Baphomet's unholy seal. She looks around. It was a difficult fight, but by some miracle, none of the cultists perished. Looking back at Ember, she kneels in front of you. Knight Commander, we are guilty of treason and we repent. We beg for your mercy. Don't listen to her, Commander. Another knight, also wearing Baphomet's tabard, throws his weapon to the ground. Repentance? She was ready to give this girl to the demons until she realized there would be no mercy for them. We are all traitors and murderers here. Henchmen of Baphomet and soldiers in Thazgarod's army. You'd better kill us all on the spot. Don't say that. You protected me, didn't you? Maybe you wanted to do something bad, but then you changed your mind, didn't you? The elf girl looks at you with her large, shining eyes. Please, don't punish them too harshly. They didn't mean to hurt anyone. They were just deceived by the demons. Ember, are you all right? Yes, just a little scared. The kind knights protected me, and then you came. You need constant watching, kiddo. Sela mutters, but she heaves a sigh of relief, now that she knows Ember is all right. Okay, just tell us what happened. Some of the locals had gathered so we could all pray together. Then those knights came and started fighting, and they killed lots of people. Then they took me here and put me on the altar. I asked them not to hurt me, then they started arguing among themselves. Some said they had to sacrifice me, and others wanted to protect me. I was so sad they were arguing. I tried to make them friends again, but they just yelled more and swung their swords. Then I cried because I didn't want anyone else to die. My tears fell on the altar, and then smoke came out of it, and the altar split in half. Then all the knights screamed, and demons came from outside and yelled that I had insulted Baphomet. But I didn't want to hurt anyone, I swear. I just wanted everyone to be friends again. Of course, you will have to apologize to Baphomet for the broken altar. Damn it, no, not even I can joke about this. Ember, honestly, not everyone deserves an apology, no matter how much you've hurt them. Thanks, D. I've got this. Ember, did you really say prayers for the Demon Lords? Yes, I think Demon Lords are the most miserable creatures in the world. Being evil is sad and painful, and it means that the evilest ones must be the saddest of all. Happy people don't start wars and don't bring terrible calamities down on others. So I thought that if they heard our prayers, then maybe they would change their minds and wouldn't be evil anymore. You know, I would say that's dangerously naive, but it's pretty obvious that Ember's got something supernatural going on here. Her patron is channeling a lot of power through her, so who knows? I mean... You seriously think you could actually convince a demon lord to see the error of their ways? Like, that they'd actually... change? I believe there's at least a little good in everyone. And everyone, even the most horrible sinner, can change. If they really want to. Yeah, maybe. Um, which of these knights protected you? All of them. Please don't punish anyone. You see, they've repented. We have, I swear. Don't believe the repentance of a cultist, Commander. We are all traitors and liars. Ember, why are you defending them? They killed your friends. They, they kidnapped you. They were going to kill you. Yes, they killed many good people. But will killing them make anything better? Please don't kill them. You see they've repented. I know it's not harsh law that guides your judgment, but your heart. Please find a little mercy for them. Ember, this really feels like a bad idea. I hope for your mercy. I hope you will punish us with the full force of the law. 
I must say, I do admire these folks. First they sell themselves to demons, then just as easily turn against their chosen idol. I'm certain that if we leave them now and have a picnic on a hill nearby, they'll happen upon a new foolish idea or a new master before we finish our sandwiches. Please be kinder. All right, Ember, but just for the record, I'm, I'm doing this for you, not for them. If you think you can change them, if you think they have genuinely changed, then I'd, I'd like to see that, to see it's actually possible. Commander, we can't be trusted. I can't even trust myself. Just a few hours ago, I was slaughtering this girl's congregation and was about to sacrifice her to Baphomet. But I believe in you. You do want to change, don't you? The knight lowers his head. Thank you. We will try. Of course, after everything we've done, we can't remain knights of the orders we betrayed. We will lay down our weapons and do the job you've sent us to do. Deal. Ember turns to you with a smile. You'll see, they won't do anything bad. Shall we go? That we shall, Ember. It's good to have you back. Sela, would you please escort our new friends here back to Dresden? Make sure their change of heart doesn't keep on changing. And we will hang back, clear up the last few loose ends here. Actually, we're past time, but um, we'll at least grab the immediate loot. Templar's Missive. We'll save that for next time. Ooh, pretty. That is very 80s swords and sorcery. Blazing Crown. Whenever the wearer of this headband of Charisma plus four deals damage through a spell to one or more enemies, she gets ten temporary hit points for three rounds. This effect can occur once per five rounds for each enemy. Am I reading that right? Does that mean that if we, like, fireballed multiple foes, she would immediately gain ten temp hit points for every foe she fireballed? Because that is phenomenal. We'll have to experiment with that a little. I mean, obviously, it's intended for Ember. We're going to give it right to her. <laughs> and yes, that is extremely 80s. That is every sword and sorcery, evil sorceress, rolled into a single character. I don't know if that really fits Ember, but it looks good on her, I guess. Anyway, that said, that said, we are uh, well past time at this point, coming up on the hour mark. So we really need to uh, hit the pause button. Get this episode wrapped up, edited, and rolled out so I can move on to next week's batch. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll take stock of our inventory, though there's not much bookkeeping I can do out here. And we will pick up here next time. As we finish canvassing the area, check out that, uh, that lore item we just found. And then head back, tie up whatever other loose ends might be waiting for us back in Dresden. After that, I believe we should be right on the cusp of that new DLC. So, that is something entirely new to look forward to. Really keen on checking that thing out. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who helped make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremier, Kazorm, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. 
That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the Patreon, the PayPal, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.